Saturday morning at home, live from Paris, we begin our NBC Sports Saturday, a big part of championship season, and the final preparations are being made for Olympic trials in many of the U.S. sports, Visa Gymnastics Championships to follow today, Adidas Grand Prix Track and Field, the third leg of the Triple Crown, the Belmont Stakes, and then tonight, the Los Angeles Kings try to win their first Stanley Cup Game 5 in New Jersey. Melanie Udin, American, Anna Ivanovic, Svetlana Kuznetsova, Thomas Hogstad, who coaches Maria Sharapova, was with Lee Na. He certainly seems to have made the right choice when it looked a little dubious at the, when it first happened about a year and a half ago. And this was the, the key part of her game that she needed to straighten out. The one that really caused her a lot of problems because of that shoulder surgery. It's really taken a lot of work to finally gotten her confidence back with her serve. Her road to two brought to you by Exxon Mobil. That was a really difficult day against Zakopalova weather-wise as has been for quite a few matches. And that's why part of why she struggled so mightily and that was where it was difficult to hold. So Sharapova only played one player in the top ten. Sarah Arani had a much tougher road and much more impressive wins. She's only at, uh, they're only ten days apart. They're both 25 years old. But as you mentioned Ted, before here, she had never gotten past the second round of this tournament. Casey Delacqua, she said, was her hardest wi her win. That was in the first round. And then she started gaining some confidence, beating former French Open champion Anna Ivanovic, former French Open yeah. champion Svetlana Kuznetsova, number 10 in the world, Angelique Kerber. And now she has taken over the number 10 spot in the rankings. And then beating Sam Stozer in a, in a match where Stozer really screwed that one up. 48 unforced errors, let this kid back in. And she took every opportunity to do so. What a fighter she is. She's, she's not just uh, she's not just consistent she's relentless and she'll do everything she can to use that big forehand mm -hmm. off her five four frame you can see by the way she had taped her um, her right thigh she had that tape on her thigh in yesterday's doubles final a match that went over two hours so yeah M Maria has played about eight and a half hours of tennis Irani has played ten and a half hours about of singles and nine and a half hours of doubles. This is her fourteenth match, thirteenth <laughs> match of the tournament. What is she feeling right about now? <laughs> <laughs> what about Maria? Uh, you know, there's the, the chance for her to make a little history today. Well, I, that's why Irani has the mm, shot. Yeah, because if if, if the, the pressure, you know, the weight of expectation gets to her. These but, two have, but of course, Ted, since they've never played, and, and since Arani's never been in this position, Maria Sharapova's going to make her feel this. Mm -hmm. Feel this yeah. moment. You better believe it. Oddly, Sara Arani says that these two have played once. <laughs> they, they, they were practice. about 12. They, she believes they were 12 years old, and they played at Balateri. Sara Arani was sent there when she was 12, and... If she, she, okay, if she remembers the score correctly, she lost Maria love and one to Maria. <laughs> She's glad Maria doesn't remember. <laughs> Have a look at where Sara Arani is trying to return the serve of Sharapova. She's done this very effectively. If she steps too far back, she's giving up too much court, too many angles. So she stays tight to that baseline, and it works against Stozer. That's why it's good for her to play doubles. I mean, she can more returns like from that area are hit. She's got quick feet and a quick mind. And her court positioning is very good. It's got to be when you're that little. High toss with the wind could be an issue. It's a high toss and it's a 
It's a long motion, too. And Maria's had some double faults this tournament. Not nearly the kind that have plagued her in seasons past. That's uh, her 27th for the tournament. But because she's been returning so big, it frees her up more on her serve. She doesn't feel those double faults as much. There's that better movement from Sharapova because that was a tricky shot. And I saw her earlier, I played an Get exhibition in Stuttgart. You could tell that she seemed much more comfortable on the clay court surface. She's won a couple tune-ups. That's why she came in with the belief she could win this. Did we envision the day we would say Maria Sharapova's record this year on red clay, 15 and 0. <laughs> yeah. She's better on clay than I'm sure. the, the big thing that Maria Sharapova talked about Amazing. yesterday was that she said she just feels so much more comfortable on clay now and I'm actually enjoying playing on it. And that's a, oftentimes, I think you lived it, John, that's a huge mental barrier. Do you enjoy it? If you can enjoy what you go through on this surface, I'm impressed because uh, there's been a lot of trials and tribulations for her. And there was definitely some second guessing on her part and others whether or not she could really get to this position. I mean, she can't ask for any better situation than this. This isn't playing Justine Hennon out there. Who's commentating? I saw her. Did you? She's the best. She's the only commentator I know that could still win this. <laughs> <laughs> Although there are a lot of champions here today. Yeah, and Chris Everett was here for yes, two weeks. Exactly. She's still the all-time with seven French Open titles. Go! Martina, she won two French Opens, nine Wimbledons. And she saw Maria play when Maria was just six years old, playing in a clinic in Moscow. She was impressed. Maria's father, Yuri, said, uh, what should we do with her? And she said, take her to America. That's how she got to Boletari's. Martina said, this kid's going to be good. <laughs> and guys, I asked Martina what it was that she saw in Maria. You know what she said? I liked the way she walked. She was six years old. I liked the way she walked. How cool What does she that? mean? What do you think she meant? She had, Swagger? because, well, yeah, she had a carriage about her mm -hmm. already. And, uh, and this kind of focus when she was just a little kid. Ronnie's pretty tidy at net. She, because of her doubles expertise, her volleying skills are pretty good. Obviously, she's very, very wound up. I mean, never been in this position. This is where Maria Sharapova wants to take take an early lead, just because she's got so much more experience. It's, it's like she's walking out in the court, up a break. That's on the line. That's always a question when someone's in their first ever major final. Can they focus on tennis and not the occasion? Maria did this kind of work when she was just 17 years old and won Wimbledon against Serena Williams, who was going for her third straight. Astonishing effort. The difference is for Ronnie, she doesn't have a lot of firepower, a lot of fight, yes. Very athletic, can run all day, but she can't hurt you. Oh, and there's the first indication of what is referenced in our beginning. Ronnie's struggled to hold her serve today. 
Well, there you see the list of the women who've won the career Grand Slam. That dates back, obviously, in Maureen Connolly's case, before the Open Era, and several others there. Serena held all four titles at once. So did Martina, held all four titles at once. She had six in a row at once, as much. Yes. <laughs> She's come out and obviously hitting the ball very clean. Sending quite a message to Arani early. Her ball, Arani's, by the way, which she tries to use topspin on, particularly that forehand. That's going to be right where Cheryl Pova likes it. That's in as well. It's always had that focus, that's so true. Intensity there. That's got to be depressing. When you hit a return, the ball comes mm -hmm. right back to you <laughs> <laughs> off the pole. Well, that is a dream start for one career Sharapova. Sharapova hopes is the realization of a dream. <laughs> Live from Paris, the Women's Championship at the French Open. Maria Sharapova's first appearance in this championship match. Monday, she will regain the number one ranking in the world for the first time in four years. And today, she hopes to grab this one prize and make it a career slam. That is why she's regained the number one yeah. ranking. Guns if you had any questions about the excellence of her return to serve. That was 81 miles an hour. Um, Arani switched rackets, bought herself out of her old racket contract to use this livelier one and longer one, about an inch longer. She was looking for more pop on the ball. She said it's added 10 Ks to her serve, mm -hmm. so that's six miles an hour. And she's still in like <laughs> the low <Yes>. 80s. <laughs> it's in fact, Arani's fastest Can serve launch. of the tournament was 95. Now, the tournament, they recorded 100 of the 128 women in the draw on the courts with radar. And Arani's fastest was 95. She was number 100 on the list. A fastest serves. Out of a hundred? Out of a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> right in front of her was Vanya King, another another mm -hmm. doubles player. And you just see all the numbers there backed up what Mary said. That dramatic serve difference. That's, oh, a, man, line. that's a line. <laughs> now, Ronnie's having trouble winning points, and shots like this just kind of add Can sting to the off. wound. Almost four games in, and Arani has only won four of them, four points. Maria's already cleaned some lines. Hawkeye presented by Fidelity.
That's what she's got to try to do. She's got to use that slice. It's a pretty good 40, shot. 40. She's quite tall, Maria Sharapova, so she's going to have a tougher time with this ball. What a way to have to make a living for Irani. I mean, yeah. It shows you how well she competes with this serve. This is a liability. That you can imagine why she's been getting 80% of her first serves in for the tournament. Because here comes her second. That's a nice depth from Arai. You're playing against a big babe. You want to keep them as far away from you as possible. Maria shouldn't allow herself to get sucked into these type of long points. That's Irani's only chance. And it does make you wonder, Mary, how Irani beats Stozer, who's considered one of the better servers in the women's game. Stozer really helped yeah. her out. I mean, Sam must, she, I don't know how she's been sleeping these last couple of nights. Oh. Almost 50 unforced errors and uh, just very, very uncertain display from the reigning U.S. Open champ. <laughs> And that's like putting it up on a team for That's about 68 miles an hour. Ooh. 68 yeah, and it's just and in the middle right of the, the strike zone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not even yeah. close to a line. Something tells me in the double she's not serving in volley. Somehow winning, serving, staying back. Uh, tremendous start. Everything Maria would have wanted. Four easy games. Here's our Ally Bank player profile. Maria Sharapova's season. Those two red clay championships leading right into Royal, or to Paris. Yeah, those are two big events. I mean, she, she beat some tough players to win those titles. Keep in mind that Arani won three smaller clay courts of events, and as Maria said, she's won more clay court matches than anyone on the year. <laughs> but Maria, I mean, again, that she has gone undefeated in the red clay season. That says an awful lot about how mm -hmm. hard she's worked to get herself back to number one, surviving that shoulder surgery. <laughs> We screwed up this part of her game for a long time. It's her second double fall. One of the fascinating admissions that Sharapova has made during this French Open is that she doesn't do well with game plans. <laughs> Poor Thomas. And that's what yesterday she laughed about that. She said, I just, yeah, he's always yelling at me. Didn't you follow what we talked about? <laughs> Well, here's the first glimmer for Arani. Well, the crowds are realize that she's going to need their help. Here's her first winner. I just won't. Don't won't like it if I see them try to bring Maria's game down as opposed to just pumping Irani up, not applaud like bad shots. Make this Irani earn it a bit. Step up her level. Zero oh. After this four-game streak, he started. Now this is Irani's coach. It seems the only way Arani can win games at the moment is if she throws in these double falls and gives her points. I'd be content to just hit a high percentage first serve in Sharapova and be willing to get in exchange for a few rallies
because the truth is, is Arani's not a big returner. She does try to step in and take it early, but she doesn't go for too much. All uh, confirmed out. Hawkeye presented by Fidelity. Well, that's called out. Maria wants to, yep, yeah, going to now accept it. So, Arani gets one break back her first game. Now, on Women's Championship Day in Paris, this stadium seats about 15,000 filled with champions, and getting the prime seat alongside the president of the French Federation is three-time champion Monica Sellis. Well, she would have won, well, won a lot more, too. Just the greatest match player I've ever seen. We talk about how Nadal and Sharapova play every point for what it, for all it's worth. Monica did that better than anyone. There's the touch at net. Second winner of the match. These are the type of things she's going to need to do. Exactly. There's like the moon ball. Forces Sharapova back, and she's a good volleyer. And she plays doubles well. She won it yesterday, and she's won a lot of mm -hmm. events this year. Arani trying to do something that's a rarity in today's game, to win both the singles and the doubles. Last done by a woman here, Mary Pierce in 2000. In the men's open era. Only once has that happened. Ken Rosewall, the first year of the Open Era, 1968. Look at this. I thought Kofelnikov won the singles and doubles here in the French. 96. On the men's side, yeah. Yeah, you're my fact checker. Thank you. Did I tell you it's happened twice in the open air on the men's side? <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy. It's a a pretty great shot for, to go for a winner from that far away. But Arani was gaining the court and Maria, who doesn't move that, she doesn't, she moves well on the clay now, but she's still not that quick. She knows she's got to end this point, go for a winner. She does that a lot if you're coming to net against her. She just goes, she blasts something. And a lot of times they go in. Sure, that was part of her game plan to try to get Marie on the move. The execution is not there yet for her. Uh, Francesca Schiavone showed when she won this two years ago and got to the final last year. She's a master at giving you a lot of variety, but Schiavone got to the net an awful lot more. When she beat Stozer in the final two years ago, most of her winners came from the net. from Arani. She's the kind of player, this kid. When she starts to play well, you don't see her winners go up necessarily. You see her opponent's errors go up. Well, at least she's, she's in this match now. She's yes. uh, gotten rid of some of the nerves and Sharapova's feeling some pressure. The crowd's getting solidly behind Arani. That's helped her. It's fascinating to look at this. The person in tennis that Sara Arani says she most admires, mm. David Ferrer. That's pretty pretty insightful, isn't it? That makes sense. Yeah. You know, guy's a little guy playing against giants. It's the same with her. That's 
just this very big, beautifully struck ball. Ganzu. Three-time French champion sitting next to Ilina Stasi. She also won the U.S. Open. She was honored earlier this week by the ITF. Arantxa Sanchez Vicario for all the Fed Cup plays she played. <laughs> <Hey around. Man. laughs> I think we all understand what Arantxa is feeling right now. I can see again. <laughs> what? <laughs> that ball dropped oh, right on the line. Well, that's the second one that's happened to Arani. Ely won this event as well. Mm -hmm. It was in a final two. Of course, Arani likes to run around that back end if she can and hit that forehand. A la actually Maria Sharapova, Rafa Nadal coming over her head. And uh, Sharapova is good enough to hit winners with that back end. It's just where Arani hits it is just so good for her. She's got to get her moving. I would definitely advocate using some more slice if she could. All right, well, Sharapova has put a stop to any roll here by Iran. Now we are live in Paris for Maria Sharapova trying to kick off a weekend that's going to be filled with history if she can win today. Of course, tomorrow, the men's championship at 9 a.m. Eastern on NBC. History at stake on both sides as Djokovic and Nadal meet for the first time ever in the French final. tennis Arani has played. Mm -hmm. She's certainly a road runner. She's obviously very fit. Those legs have looked, I mean, when you combine that with the nerves in this occasion, she's looked, she's not moving as well as she normally does. Shell shock. <laughs> When you look at this, Mary, you think there should be weight classes, don't you? <laughs> and I was just going to ask, do you think the weight of shot, this is something we talk about with Nadal a lot, but in this case, is the weight of shot hurting absolutely. her? Oh, absolutely. Oh. Hurting her running? She's never faced uh, mm -hmm. Maria before. She's not used to, to this kind of pace. It's robbing her of time. Yeah, it's hard to think clearly when it, the ball just keeps coming right back at you. Arani robs Can't. her opponents of time by playing so tight to the court and trying to manage it well. But uh, she's right now she's not yet able to handle the pace. Maybe she'll need a set just to get used to it. Well, it's just about up. Double set point. Only on court 29 minutes.
It's harder for her to stop herself and push back into the court. Slice is going to be good for her if she can just hang in there at the back and then she can go bigger on the forehand. Even there, she sliced that forehand. That's, it. That's something she needs to be doing. Anything to ball low? I think so, yeah, because Maria's so tall. Merci. set points and it'll be Sharapova's challenge now to close out the first set let's uh, have our Mercedes-Benz ask the expert question and it is the theme one of today's themes what has Maria Sharapova done to improve on clay you know I'm not so sure that she's that much better I mean I think she was pretty darn good in a way before I mean obviously it's, it's her experience has helped her do you think she's moving better well, I do think she's moving better that would be certainly a factor, mm -hmm. but I don't think her, in a way, her competition, this is like, the timing of this is beautiful. Her competition wasn't, is, isn't as difficult as it was this event. Well, there's the incredible roadrunner you talked about. I mean, she's, uh, you gotta love her for her effort. There's no doubt about that. It's timing can be everything, mm -hmm. and in this case, when you look up, I saw again. You see someone like Serena losing first round, where they were supposed to play in the quarters. Hennen's doing commentary. Kleister's chosen not to play. Other than Azarenka is not as confident on clay. That's her weaker surface. Who was the person that was was ranked higher than her? The greats, the champions. I mean, look, you get a career Grand Slam. I'm <laughs> hearing rarefied air. Guns and Mary, we, we've touched on this throughout this event that the women's game doesn't have a, a Nadal. No. Someone, and that would have been Justine. That would, yeah, Justine Anna certainly was. She won this four times, and she was a remark. She was a beautiful clay court player. And uh, there aren't any clay court specialists anymore, except that Maria has become that. And I do. <laughs> she has, she said, uh, she's learned patience, and she hates patience. And she certainly has worked very hard on her movement. Tom Skins. And there are so many great champions, as we know, on both sides that did not win this title. Kim Kleisters has won. And great a player as Kim Kleisters has been. She had two very tough final losses here.
waited. Just timed it perfectly. Knew that uh, Sharapova may not have a whole lot left in the tank to, to make that quick move so she didn't have to hit it too big. It's a great decision. 18 shot rally. Not the rat type of rallies that Sharapova should be in. Again on this first Down set, set point. The three on her own serve this time. She should, to me, again, not risk a whole lot on her first serve. Just hit a solid serve, and she can dictate the point from there, like she did at 30 all. Just like ah, that. Nice, nice finish. finish. She turned it, took that right up the line. So Maria Sharapova, halfway to her first French Open title and a career Grand Slam. Then she she had all this there. That's what they're going for today, and that's about right now. That's about the size of these two, side by side. <laughs> um, so Schiavone yes. in that match, Stozer to get to that final two years ago had beaten Henan, Serena, and Yankovic. So Schiavone faces Sam Stozer, and in that match, the Italian, who'd been on the tour for 14 years and was finally in her first major final, had six aces, was 14 of 15 winners from the net. I mean, she played a remarkable match. Wasn't that fun? How emotional. Well, she went for it, right? That's what we remember about that day. But she's got a lot more oh, the, the firepower yeah. to her game, right. a lot more yes. variety than Iran it does. This is one of the problems. And, and yeah. Schiavone's credit, she came back and made the finals again last year. She did. And Lee Na had beaten Maria in the semis. Moi, je and then Mademoiselle she took out Arana. Schiavone in the final. But Schiavone said after she won, Italian tennis changed. Her juniors were signing up for, for clinics. Tennis clubs, people were joining. As Schiavone says, we are not a big country, but we are Italian. We have big hearts. <laughs> no bathroom break by uh, Arani to try to, if had nothing else, get Maria to be a little chilly. I mean, it's not a hot day. Still a fair amount of wind. Try to get her to cool down. Schiavone, because she's got so much game from everywhere on the court, including and especially the net, she could change. She had so much variety. She could change with spins, slices, pace. It would be hard for this woman to change pace because to change pace, you kind of require some. That's an absolutely beautiful shot there. It looked for all the world that she was going to go cross court. And she <laughs> shortened her swing. Take a look at this. She couldn't get as much on it as maybe she wanted. But she slid. Do you see that slide? Yeah. That's the thing that if you wanted to pick one thing to me, she's actually learned how to slide on this surface. That's a spectacular shot to get the triple break point. Do you know how much easier it is to return when you know that the balls you know, can't be hit by you? When the hardest serve you're going to see is 85, 90 miles an hour? Well, that uh, t is 
not going to be the case, obviously, tomorrow when we've got history on the line on both sides. Novak Djokovic trying for a Djokovic slam, holding all four majors, which, by the way, neither of his two main rivals have done. But Rafa Nadal will be trying to become the greatest champion ever here, his seventh French on the line. And it's noteworthy because it's the first time they've played here in the finals. It's our upcoming match presented by Mercedes-Benz. And it's live tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. East, 6 a.m. West on NBC. What Sharapova wants to prevent is something that has not happened here, shockingly, in 11 years. There has not been a women's final here that has gone to the third set since that fabulous final between Capriati and Kleisters in 2001. Congratulations to Jennifer mm -hmm. Capriati. Be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Well deserved. Now, those fans, I think they got turned away from watching the McEnroe Brothers doubles match earlier today on the room <laughs> yeah. in the stadium. Well, they, uh, they, they make you feel good about being out there, I must say, the French. And that's the great, great court one where they've set up a set up a screen. Those with either Longland tickets today or grounds passes can go in there and watch. She needs to go for more because she's she's good at net. She's got some good hands. She's got to do something different, change gears, and this is uh, would be one of her best hopes to get her off balance a little and then charge the net. She's a good volleyer. That's why she wins so much in doubles. She can get away with that serve. out of her element to have to go bigger on the return. She's more content to get a lot of balls back. This is hard for her to have to take chances, risk on the return. Oh, oh. Keep getting serves like that. That's safe serves, high percentage serves. But ones that she can't be hurt by. I mean, she's been very sharp considering these conditions, Maria. I think she really did need to get used to it and spend a lot of that first set getting used to it. And now she's picking her spots well. I mean, she, you've got to be so opportunistic if there's any way you can open up a, a point, get yourself to the net. And her hands are so soft and clever.
I mean, that's that's the her best shot is to try to pressure Sharapova with doubles tactics. You know, take the ball early, get him behind it. The challenge is, is again, doing it off of so much pace. impressed by Maria's defensive skills. She's been able to sort of hang in some points where she looked to be in trouble and get back on the offense. I mean, that was not a ball that she's normally misses. Maria Sharapova trying to win the, her first ever French Open. Saw her Ronnie trying to shock the world if she can win this. That's using your height well there. This is a much smaller opponent. Live with you on NBC from Paris. Mary Carrillo, John McEnroe, Ted Robinson, our NBC sports team on championship weekend. She, she'd be better off even going shorter than sort of that ball that's just sitting like a dead duck as we look at uh, the match summary. Brought to you by Cannon Power Shot, the numbers. Well, not surprisingly, it's uh, Maria that's dictating all the play. I mean, that goes without saying. She's going to make some mistakes, but she, it's even more on one side than it appears on uh, the stats so far to me. She'd be well served to keep that percentage high in the first serve. Played a little safer, stay away from having to hit a lot of second serves. I mean, it's interesting to see how she can, now that's about an 85 mile an hour serve, and yet, she, Arani, she can hit that serve and sort of dictate the point. <laughs> well, not often. <laughs> yeah. She's got to be extremely alert for the second shot. <laughs> she doesn't win a lot of points on her serve. She wins after the serve. <laughs> Mostly off her forehand side. Mm -hmm. uh, you you got to admire the fight. in doubles and she should have lost the point obviously here yeah. got that second chance and that's a good play by her to hu hustle her way back to net and take that net over a couple good overheads mm. often players now stay back they don't even take charge forward as all players used to or taught you hit a lob on us and you come right in I mean, That's got to hurt Arani because she tried to actually go a little bigger. And she might be good for an underhand serve, you know, because she's got such good hands. But Chang did the lender.
double. Count That's all that's she it, needs. That's equally painful. You no, know, Maria's it's made some double fault. That's her yeah. first. I mean, but she can afford to. Not a Ronnie. Not here. Already down a break in the set. When you watch Arani in this match, and really, there are baseballs. You see her coach urging her on. Pablo Lozano. There are baseball pitchers who specialize in changeups, and Arani's like one of those whose first serve is a changeup, and her second is a changeup <laughs> off the changeup. Jamie Moyer, the <laughs> yes. women's tour. <laughs> And credit to her because we've referenced Sharapova on Monday will be number one. Sara Arani on Monday will be number 10 in the world. She needs this game big time. But she got it. A dicey deuce point moment. All right, those are the rankings that are projected for the WTA on Monday. Maria, for four, after four years, gets back to the top. And Arani, look at that astounding. She was 38 in the world last year during Roland Garros. She'll be 10 in the world. Okay. These conditions have gotten even more difficult. The wind is really causing some problems. And it's I think it would hurt Sharapova more. This might be an opportunity for Ronnie somehow to get into this match. Her to execute. She's done an excellent job so far. There's an example of a ball that she's trying to take early. Skids off the line. It's got some pretty good spin, but you can see for Maria, that's right, right in her wheelhouse. Nice. That's the hardest serve she's hit today. 183 kilometers. What's that? About 115. That has a good zip on it. Fourth ace. I wonder if Irani would be what better served it back off, you know, stand with much farther back. Give Sharapova a different look, you know, use, give herself some more time to take a better swing at these serves. You're going to see Nadal tomorrow. When he plays Djokovic, he's going to be way, way back returning. And Arani's position, Mary, I'm assuming that took the kick out of Stoser's serve in their match. Yeah, um, Stoser had beaten Sepulkova the round before, and Sepulkova was right. really trying to return her from so deep, and was she getting nowhere with it. And that's not going to be an issue in this match.
And I think Arani has to stay that tight to the baseline because she's going to try to use Maria's pace against her. Like that. If she goes, if she steps too far back, then she's going to have to be the one creating pace, and she doesn't really own a lot of pace. And now she's way off the court. Back to old school, moon ball. Play a lot. You had an impressive moon ball today, by the way. Did I? The hang time. Did you go? <laughs> did you go lunar? <laughs> John, I, 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 I went a little nuts. I don't know if, <laughs> if that's the same as lunar. Uh, look, I thought that yeah. was an ace. Well, Let's that's see. what everybody's going to take a look at here. I thought that hit. Uh, Ronnie scratches. Allison Lang is out of the chair. Oh, oh says boy. out. That's annoying when that happens. Let's get it off the line. And yes, that's what I thought. I thought it caught some of the line, but it's second serve. That's a big turn of events, potentially. Had one break of serve in the first set. That was when she was down for love. This one gets her square in the second set. Swing and you know, yeah. it. But that was just the right play. That's, this was a good ball, first of all, just the fact that Arani got it back. That ball was skidding. Yeah. And she really made sure she got under it. I mean, you know, that was break point down. And that had I mean that has a little Nadal like look, doesn't totally. it? Totally. So similar. working on the sprinting there to get to that enough time to really f flick her wrist. I've watched Maria work out a lot when, when she's practicing so much of it is about footwork without even a ball on the court. I mean just great great uh, speed work, training, movement, balance. Her balance is so much better. <laughs> You're 6'2", you've got her, her center of gravity is riding up high, but she has, I mean, apart from all the rehab she's had to do with her shoulder, what she's done to become a, a more balanced and effective mover is impressive. I mean, it's not like she needed the money. That's <laughs> <laughs> it's true. She's three games away from a career slam. NBC Sports Championship season tonight. The Los Angeles Kings will take their second shot at winning their first ever Stanley Cup. 45 years of existence. It's game five in New Jersey, 8 Eastern. The Stanley Cup final presented by Geico tonight. Talk about an inviting serve to hit mm -hmm. for Shara Pova.
faire en trans. something with her this is her favorite shot the forehand hasn't had too many looks like that well, because she's so close she maybe tensed up a little bit because she had that 4-1 look in it set in 4-1 the double break, that's what Maria wants now. A little bit of insurance. She played one of our hope, great hopes, uh, Christina McHale. McHale had her five love in the third set and lost to her. So she will fight to the bitter end. Another game she needs to have. It's almost like target practice, or a ball machine. He's grooving here. Put it right where I want it. Didn't have to move at all. Just turn the body, step in. Thank you very much. Beautiful off both sides. <laughs> that was nice because she used the angle a lot shorter than Arani expected. Tough to tell what she's gonna do. She can certainly ill afford to hit these short balls or running. Right here is hanging by a very thin thread. Jennifer mm -hmm. looked to be directing towards her backhand on that exchange.
against him. Would there be a temptation in Sheriff Bovis shoes to pull back even in like 3% in returns? I think she already is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think she's playing it for point, her. Point the next one out to the police. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the one that she's pulling <laughs> back. What? Yeah. Well, you, wait a yeah, minute. Yeah. This is a big moment for her. Let's you know, that's, that's yeah. face it. I mean, she's a couple of games away from from winning the French Open from a career Grand Slam. See, it, see how she didn't go for the one. <laughs> <Yes>. Exactly. <laughs> I know, we have to make another quick shout out to uh, to Nick Boletari, who coached both mm -hmm. of these two. They both t spent time in his academy, and I'll never forget when she when Maria was about ten years old. Nick said to me in his inimitable way. Nick said, "Remember this name, yeah. Mary dear." Maria Shapovalova. <laughs> and boy, was he right. Sort of. Yeah. And again, we're so happy to hear that Nick is doing yeah. uh, better. Got an email from him yesterday. He's um, out of the hospital from double pneumonia. Nice that he's, uh, I'm sure he's watching every second of this. We should also send out our Another best to our longtime NBC colleague, Bud Collins. No who's, kidding. No who's, kidding. Uh, absence is duly noted with an institution in the tennis world. Unfortunately, Bud's got to miss Wimbledon for the first time in 45 years. Hopefully, he'll be back for the Open. Maria's just really mm -hmm. stepping it up to pressure. Put the hammer down here. Oh, that's pretty. So oh. It's not good enough. Oh. 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 Ronnie was pretty, and Sheriff Oba was gorgeous. Two games away. Irani was so certain that she'd hit a, struck a winner. The beautiful little volley. What a charge from Sharapova to hustle up and get that one and fire it back at her. Causing the error and bringing Maria Sharapova now two games away from a career Grand Slam. <laughs> and her first French Open, as Maria said the other day, there are not too many firsts left for me. These Italians are not expressive. <laughs> no, I know. Oh, that was... <laughs> Agony, but didn't that point emphasize the ask the experts question we had earlier? Yes, it, I mean, how, that Sharapova got to that ball, yes, and could do something with it. That learning how to move forward like mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. not just side to side. That's impressive. Chris Lewis was in the 83 Wimbledon final. At first, I thought, oh, could this unherald a guy? You know, the pressure's on me. And the more I thought about it, you know, this, you can't ask for more because he can't hurt me. And you go out there and execute, it's yours. And I, I'm willing to bet that Maria Sharapova had the same exact feeling when she played this girl, Irani. Oh. Nothing that Irani can do can hurt her at all. And if she goes out, as she's been playing, a beautiful match so far is dominating her. Mm -hmm. You don't get those chances very often. You know, this is, a, what an opportunity to get your career slam. And all that hard work pays off to get a chance like this. I'm puzzled by the question and the French reporter who talked to the players before asked for Ronnie, before walking on the court, you know, you must be okay because you have nothing to lose. I'm always puzzled by that yeah. question. I would think that <laughs> she would walk on this court thing. I'm <laughs> this is my probably never going to get a shot to do this again. I think the better question, I mean, that she has much less pressure than Maria. Yes. That's really much more the, the pressure from everybody that. else, right? <laughs> Oh, 
Thompson. Five doubles today. Those have been of minimal harm. <laughs> Boy, does she ever need that. That's the, the only outright winner I can think of that she's hit off the return. Maybe one other. Certainly, you feel like she's she a guess. I mean, this was 30 love, mm -hmm. uh, this game. Stays alive. Still down a break. Gonna force Sharapova to keep playing. Well, a great way on this weekend NBC Sports Championship season to cap off our coverage of the French Open. Nadal and Djokovic live tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific. They played here before, but never in the final. And this modern, updated version of Djokovic. This will be the first time he plays Rafa here. they played finals everywhere else. They've played in huge situations, but tomorrow history will be made by either man. A uh, four straight final, the two played four slams in a row. Could there be a rule ever where you could allow your opponent to serve twice in a row? Not have to serve at all? Can be made? Because that's what she needs. Talk about climbing a mountain. No, you serve again. Sharapova saw the corner of her eye coming in. This is a beautiful little passing shot. Not going for the winner, just getting it low. Imagine how much, uh, even though she's been here before and won titles before, in this moment before, that she's going to be fighting the, the over amp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to true. not try to end it too quick. She's definitely got the adrenaline pumping. Oh, wow. Ah, that does work. And Maria Sharapova. We'll be back to serve for the Career Grand Slam. Well, we first saw her. This is really the first time the tennis world watched her. And this astounding day at 17 years of age, out hitting Serena Williams on center court Wimbledon. See there. The US and Australia. John, those were before the shoulder surgery that took her away from the game. This may be the sweetest of all. I guess the first one to beat Serena, but now after all the battles with injury, serving for the match. With some new balls, maybe help Alani at least briefly. Maria's mother has been here, she said, in Paris, with her fiance, Sasha Vujicic, is finishing up his basketball season in Turkey. Couldn't make it? He, he, she said She said he'll be joining shortly. <laughs> It's a little late, man. And there's 
so much Can more to come for Sharapova because not only will she play Wimbledon, but she will be back at Wimbledon for the Olympics. She's never played the Olympics. She missed Beijing because of her shoulder surgery. Is she playing for the U.S. or Russia? She's been representing Russia internationally, so... Seems unusual since she's been in the States since six. Her, uh, her country of birth is Russia. Her tennis is 100% American. We're going to take all the credit mm -hmm. right now. Well, she's run out of uh, tricks. It, uh, she was up against, yeah. her back was against the wall the moment she's walked out on this court. A lot to be proud of to get to this point. The finals of the French Open. Coming from out of nowhere, really. crowd is used to sitting for hours on end with you know, the yeah. best of five set matches of, of the men so they yeah be it's perfectly exactly. happy to see some more tennis <laughs> and I think John through the years we've seen a fair number of first timers that have wilted in this moment that have not been able to handle the play for a championship Is a, and what a way to get match point. She hasn't wilted. She's just, no. this is a different I, level. I, so that's what I was, after the first four games, right? I think Arani has competed I mean, very she, well. She came out, obviously, yeah. because yeah. it has never been there, extremely tight and wound up. And mm -hmm. Sharapova yeah. used her experience to take advantage. But Merci. here we are, Ted. Mm -hmm. Match point for a career slam for Maria Sharapova. gotten out of the court, by the way, to get that interview. So. Expecting this one to end right up the next couple points. It's one match point shit saved. sure this was a part of the game plan, but she perhaps the nerves got in the way earlier in the match. Because now that she's gotten herself in at least the flow, it's starting to come that shot more readily, more easily. And it's clearly uh, one that uh, I'm sure they thought they could be utilized to their advantage. Too little, too late, it certainly appears. Be a big burst of applause. She can get get one of these breaks back. Move on the pace. And the John, shot is amazing. John, what you sense is this crowd really appreciates what that woman is doing. That Arani, despite being just basically out outgunned here, 
is fighting hard. Everyone that watches this sport has to respect yeah. her for, for what she's what she's trying to do. And they understand that Marie is playing at a very deliberate pace here, given the gravity of the moment. She's pay, playing, we must say, an exceptional match. Yeah. Considering that she's trying to make history herself to win this for the first time, to get the career slam, it's, it's an incredibly good match. Match point number two. is going to make championship point the toughest for Maria Sharapova. Well, Maria had an opportunity early in that rally. Matter of fact, off the serve, she chose to take a ball in the air. It was a tricky shot to have to go big on. Eventually, Irani got into another rally, a longer one. Let's see. See Let's see. That's a way to shut the crowd up. Sixth ace. And given what she has been through, her fitting ending here on her third championship point could well be another ace. Oh boy, that would be the, just the way to do it. Absolutely. Will shed tears into the red clay. She has won the prize that so many wonder if they'll ever get the French Open Championship and a career Grand Slam. Elle remporte ses premiers internationaux de France sur le quatrième grand chemin qui lui manquait, Maria Sharapova. Spectacularly well handled. And I think given her problems here in the past, you can see pretty obviously what it meant to her to get this done. And remember that not only has Maria come back from shoulder surgery, the kind of th surgery that could threaten a career. Such an impact on her serve. In a few then there's the frustration of having been to a couple of finals, Wimbledon last summer, Australia this year, and not getting over that hurdle. Well, she seemed to almost uh, derive more energy and effort from the doubters. Boy, she sh told everyone, I don't care what you said. And uh, here she is. I mean, must say that uh, this is a well-deserved for her to have this career slam, 25 years of age. The tenth time Maria Sharapova has played Roland Garros, the first time she had reached the final. And now she is a French Open champion. She has won each of tennis's major championships, joining a very select group. We'll have the trophy presentation 
But Coach Thomas Hogstead, who will today say, yes, you followed the game plan. That's Cecil Mamet, who's a Maria's hitting partner. He's a former pro himself. We'll have the trophy presentation. Mary Carrillo is going to be on the court, as always, and she'll have a chance to speak to the champion. And we'll look ahead at tomorrow's men's final. Maria Sharapova, a career Grand Slam. Well, Maria Sharapova has just climbed, literally climbed, up into the stands, walked through the French Federation box to hug her coach Thomas Hodgson. That's Cecil Mamet, yep. former touring pro. Both for touring and former pro, Cecil and Thomas Hodgson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> story to tell that baby in years to come. Maria Sharapova's... Now she's like, how do I get back? As you said, John, her, you know, her fame and celebrity are unquestioned. She recently, just several weeks ago, Forbes put out their list of the top 100 powerful celebrities in the world. I mean, this crossing all spectrums. And five tennis players in that, the most of any sport, including Maria Sharapova. And that's what I'm saying. Even with despite that, you can tell what this means to her. First and foremost, she's a tennis player and a great, great one at that. We will return to Paris. Trophy presentation, interviews with the finalists still to come on NBC. Well, Maria Sharapova has made her way back onto the court after going up into the stands to celebrate with her group. They've got the a new little stage introduced this year at Roland Garros. Finally, just about have everybody in position, and the Coupe Suzanne Long Lawn will be presented here in a moment to Sharapova. Here come the trophies, the runner up trophy to Irani. In these moments, I, I've always been amazed, John, how much I've been impressed. How much, these moments show to me so much of the best of tennis. It shows almost always the great sportsmanship of the winner and it shows incredible character to me to the runner-up who has to sit and wait and be part of a ceremony that they probably would oftentimes prefer to avoid yeah they probably prefer to at this moment but in retrospect i bet you that uh, if years go by this i think thank god i was even a part of it, even if i did lose I mean, you see all those past champions in the world, in the box, in the French Federation box. Someone, do we know who who's giving the trophy this year? Well, I guess we'll find out, right? Well, we had m multiple French Open champions here today, and it'll be Monica oh, Seles that's good. That's, that's good. coming out to present the coupe. Suzanne Longlun to Maria Sharapova, who has fulfilled her own dream today to finally capture the French Open and a career Grand Slam. Well, they have now prepared themselves and organized all on the court. Jean Gachassin, and credit to him, president of the French Federation. Let's say one thing, that guy's a heck of a tennis player. Yeah, he used to be a rugby player, but he's an athlete, so he really thinks the same way the players do. And it's so good to see Monica here. She's the one, the person that is the most responsible for seeing players like Sharapova play the way they do, return so big. She was the first one I saw that stepped into the court and made the return of serve a weapon that it is today. So fitting, certainly, that she's up there to, to give Maria Sharapova the trophy. First honored is the chair umpire, Allison Lang. Sarah Rani has already shed a few tears, and you get a feeling Maria Sharapova is ready to burst herself. Couldn't blame either one of them. I think they said runner up Maria Sharapova. They announced that. That's, that's an unintentional Whoops. way to break the tension, isn't it? That gets everybody smiling. 
<laughs> That's nice for Arani. Now the Italians up in their box are chanting. They, 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 they rewrite history. Whoops. Okay, now we got it right. It's still a performance for... It's a career performance in, in two weeks for a player. Sahara Rani will take home from here the runner-up singles trophy and the doubles championship. Save of this moment. The coach there, Pablo Lozano, he won a couple of mixed doubles titles here at the French. Mesdames et messieurs, elle remporte aujourd'hui son premier titre des internationaux de France. Ladies and gentlemen, today she has won her first French Open title, Maria Sharapova. John, is she? She is a tennis player. I've never seen any of her off-court stuff get in the way of what she's just accomplished. This career slam. Ladies and gentlemen, the Russian national anthem. Now the honor here, the national anthem of the winner's home country. took such pride in Maria Sharapova when she won Wimbledon. Remember, her mobile phone rang on the court, and it was Putin. And uh, when she left the court and went across the street Sarah, to do interviews back to Russia. For the public, few words for the crowd. Hi, I just want to say congratulate to Maria for the tournament, and today you play a good match. And uh, I want to thank everybody that made possible this tournament, all the people that is here today, and. Uh, 
devo dire che questo premio è vostro perché mi avete fatto essere la persona che sono e mi avete fatto essere qua oggi. In Italian, she ended up with a huge thank you to her parents. Tous ceux qui ont rendu ce tournoi possible et surtout le public. Et en italien, elle ajoute :« Je voudrais vous remercier tout spécialement tous ceux qui ont fait que je suis là aujourd'hui, que je suis ce que je suis. » The true international nature of the sport always comes out in this trophy presentation. Everything with Schiavone, the champion here two years ago, watches. Tu as eu énormément de choses positives pendant cette ce tournoi. Première finale en Grand Chelem et lundi tu vas être membre des dix premières mondiales. You're gonna be a top ten member on Monday, first Grand Slam final. It's very, very positive. Yes. I don't feel like top ten, but I will be top ten. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's incredible for me. I can't believe it, and I'm so happy for that. Everything translated back. That is Cedric Pilly, by the way, a former outstanding player himself, who handles these chores at yeah, the French Open. He's liking it more and more. He was in the finals of Wimbledon, the finals open. And that, from today on, your life will change. Do you realize from today on? Your life is going to change. I hope it that doesn't change. I want the same life. Sarah ajoute, j'espère que ma vie ne va pas changer. Je veux garder la même vie. Merci d'applaudir Sarah et Rani. Maria, quelques mots, few words, please. Well, first, uh, in English, um, Sarah, what a, an amazing tournament. Um, I've seen you play throughout the last two weeks and the way you've performed and um, the, the match you gave me today was uh, extremely difficult and um, I really hope, I know it's our first meeting against each other, but I hope we get to play many more times and be at the stage of the tournament. So congratulations. <laughs> Sarah pour un tournoi extraordinaire. Elle l'a regardé pendant jouer pendant ces deux dernières semaines et le match aujourd'hui a été très disputé. C'est notre première rencontre, dit-elle, mais j'espère qu'il y en aura d'autres. Hey. Maintenant, euh, je parlais français un petit peu, mais. <rires> Oh, now many of us understand that. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> Just a little French. Je voudrais dire merci beaucoup pour votre soutien. C'est c'est magnifique moment dans ma carrière. And I don't know what else to say in French, but <laughs> it's. That gesture alone will be appreciated. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really speechless. It's, it's been such a journey for me to get to this stage. I, um, I don't know. Um, I have so many people to thank, but most importantly um, is my wonderful team that keeps me together. My coach Thomas for, for being there for me, for making me stronger. Um, Juan for taking care of my, my body. Gracias para todo. And um, <laughs> Cecil, thank you for being a great addition to my team. Um, Michael as well. Well, thank you for all your um, work throughout the years. You really got me um, here on stage through all these injuries. Um, Vladimir, who's not here, we'll see you in a few weeks. He's uh, another part of my team. And most importantly, my mother and my father. Um, they're the ones, they're my rock that keep me together, that keep me up every single day, that keep me motivated, that kept me going through all the tough days and the good. I was so blue. Je ne sais pas quoi ajouter d'autre en français, je n'ai pas les mots, ça a été un tel parcours pour arriver aujourd'hui. Je voudrais remercier mon équipe, mon coach Thomas, Juan, mon préparateur physique, Siso, parce qu'il vient de rentrer dans l'équipe, Michael pour tout le travail qu'il a fait au cours de ces années, Vladimir qui n'est pas là aujourd'hui, et surtout mon père et ma mère qui sont mon rock, ma motivation. And, um...
It took me um, many years to get to the stage. Eight years ago, um, it was my first breakthrough Grand Slam. I got to the quarterfinals, and eight years um, from that day, I'm here on this stage, and I'm so happy to share this moment um, with all of you today. And um, thank you, Monica. You're an inspiration to me. Thank you for giving me the trophy. And when I was young, I always wanted to compete against you, and I did, but I lost very bad. <laughs> but thank you. Um, I cannot wait to be back. Merci beaucoup. Et enfin, il m'a fallu toutes ces années pour parvenir aujourd'hui à ce quart de finale. Il y a, et en quart de finale, il y a huit ans pour la première fois, et aujourd'hui en finale, et je suis très heureuse de pouvoir le partager avec vous. Et Monica, j'ai tellement toujours voulu vous rencontrer, j'avais perdu, mais aujourd'hui je suis là. Maria, est-ce que tu sais que tu es seulement la sixième joueuse à gagner les quatre grands chelems Do you know that you only the six players to win the four major what does it mean to you well i will say that um no matter how many grand slams you win even if this was um the first one i played or if i didn't have any grand slams to be here and, and to win this one if it was my only one it would be just as special as it is um winning my fourth Maria ajoute, peu importe le nombre de grands chelems que l'on joue, que l'on gagne, si j'en avais gagné aucun, gagner celui-ci aujourd'hui, c'est le plus spécial et c'est ce qui compte. Et je crois que tout le monde se pose.